mercy from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Today I have written a creative story calling it a narrative sermon. A narrative sermon is more of a story that is told. And uh, today I've taken that sermon as a narrative story, but I've used actually um, a format that comes from a book by C.S. Lewis entitled The Screwtape Letters. If you're familiar with that book, C.S. Lewis, the Christian writer, the writer of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and other Christian uh, books as well, too. He takes that and writes about 25 letters talking about, it's a conversation of letters between an archdemon and a younger demon. And C.S. Lewis's point is that he wants readers to see how the devil is assailing us and how he is attacking us. And so <clears throat> he wants us to be able to understand that. And so I creatively wrote a narrative sermon based upon that. And so here it is. Dear Wormwood, greetings to you, my young man. I'm writing you on the eve of our father's mission. Remember that our mission is a Cor cor coronated, and it is a mission that we are all working together to attack the very body of that one enemy of ours, the church on earth. We are attacking those that bear the name Christ, and we have a lot, each of us. Each of us has a portion in which our mission is to aim at destroying the work of our enemy, the one above. And yours, my dear son, is to attack that church, St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Thorndale, Texas. I should say that is your work, because although it, in the past it has been hard, the times are t getting shorter, and we must increase our attack and fulfill our mission. As your guide and teacher, my dear son, I will instruct you and give you advice on how to attack these bearers of Christ, so that they will become ours in the end. It's very important that you listen to my advice to destroy this church and the people that are there. Remember, these people are not alone in their mission. They bear the weapon of the enemy, his very word, and that word can give them power. So don't divide that church. Don't cause them issues. Instead, work sleight of hand. Cloud the word of God for them. Take it out of their hearts and out of their hands, and you will win them over. But beware. Remember that of what appears in his word, that consequently faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word of Christ. We know those words, don't we? Take them to heart, young demon. Because we know how they affected that one servant of ours who was so good, Saul. Saul, who served as a great disciple of our father below, soon would become a great servant of our enemy above. That Saul would become Paul by that very word. So treat that word and cloud their hearts. Help them to make that word irrelevant to their lives. And soon, when they are cold, that enemy will spit them out. You have a great job before you. Have them not pick up their Bibles except on Sundays. Let them treat it as a museum piece. Have them put it on their shelves and let them forget its importance. Your next tack should be that of worship. Set in their minds that of being entertained. Help them see that worship should be entertaining. And if they, like a boring movie, are not entertained, then you will have them decide not to come back. Besides that, help them to misunderstand the means of that word and those sacraments that the one above has given as gifts to strengthen them, to give them strength and healing. If they miss the understanding of that, then that church will be halfway to being ours. And the rest is soon to fall. The sacraments of the word was given for them. But if you can close their mind to the importance of them, we begin to win in our mission. 
The next attack is to look for those who want change. Those who don't want the teaching and the doctrine, the truth of Scripture. Those that look for greener grass on the other side. Use those people. Those people that are anxious. Help them to make their pastor anxious. Whether they go to another congregation or stop going at all. They will cause conflict for their pastors. And soon maybe he will move on and we will be able to attack even more. Look for those with glazed eyes who ask the small questions that soon become big. Sooner or later they will start to turn around. And if that is not good enough for you, remember what we did to the Corinthian church. Even Paul, that once servant of ours, wrote to them, Are you still not ready? Are you still worldly from since you are jealous? Are you worldly? Are you just acting like mere men? Those words described our mission well for that congregation. Maybe the possibility for this congregation that you, O oh young son, have been assigned to. What the enemy's people do not know is that we are at work among them, working in their hearts and working in their lives for the purpose of destroying his mission. That is the strength that we possess. Where there is division, our hand is at work. Where there are people who are disgruntled and upset, we can turn their children away from God. And let the title of child of God remain while their hearts are not really a follower. Humans, my friend, are most interesting creature of all his creations. They are not like you and me. They are both body and of spirit. And many of them deny the need for him. So these humans, the ones that don't look to him, are already in our pocket. The one that you must work on is the one who calls themselves a Christian and does not live like it. Their father sent his, their father sent his son to destroy the very works that we were to do. But humans easily mistake the free gift of God. It's in their nature to think that things must be earned. And so when they look to God, they don't see the free gift of Christ. They think that they're earning their way. It's another way for us to help them, to make them think that they have to be good enough and yet they lose sight of the free gift that God gives to them. This is our work to overcome his promise. There is something more that you must take heart within those people, my young devil. Humans are split creatures. They can believe one thing and live totally the opposite. We call them the carnal Christians, the worldly Christians. They are in our pocket. When he or her faith and actions are very opposite from one another, we have begun to overtake them. When their lifestyle becomes a counterfeit to their Christian faith, then they are beginning to become ours. Many Christians live that way. They don't understand. They think that the pleasure and the lifestyle that they have is what God wants for them. Remember, let them think the pleasures of sin and let them be happy and think that it is not affecting them and you've won them to our side. Now I want you as well to be warned and to be quite clear. When one of these Christians cry out and ask themselves, am I living as an enemy of the cross of Christ? Be very careful because when these Christians ask this question, when they call out to God for forgiveness, when their heart and their mouth reveal that they believe in Jesus, my son, you have begun to lose them. Remember Peter, how well we had him in our reaches he was there. First he thought he was a sinner. And then sooner or later we allowed and helped him deny the very Savior that he loved. But in the end he called upon the Lord and he was saved. I should warn you that if these Christians turn this way and look to their Christ for mercy, you've lost your work. And you will be removed from your position and you will hold none. Remember that your work is meant to lead these people away from God and not to the Son. Keep your work 
the arch devil screw tape. You know, when Luther wrote his hymn, A Mighty Fortress, he penned these words quite clearly. Though hordes of devils fill the land and all threaten to devour us, we tremble not, unmoved we stand. They cannot overpower us. Let this world tyrant rage in battle well engage. His might is doomed to fail. God's judgment must prevail. One little word subdues him. And in that closing verse, he says, God's word forever shall stand, abide. No thanks to foe who fear it, for God himself fights on our side with weapons of the spirit. Were they to take our house, our home, our goods, our honor, our children, our spouse, though life be wretched away, they cannot win the day. The kingdom remains for ours forever. Thank God that in Christ Jesus, God has won the war for us. He sustains us in our battle, and he has overcome. And because of that, we are blessed to be called his children. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.